Well, good evening. So, today I am gonna make gnocchi. So, I have a recipe here for you. Hopefully you can read that. Pretty straightforward, right? So, what I've done is I took my potatoes and I poked them with a fork and I baked them in a 375 degree oven on a rack. So what I'm gonna do is show you those right here. They're all cooked, okay? So now I'm letting them cool enough so I can handle them. I am gonna take out the center. So what I have to do that is my paring knife. I'm gonna work onto a board right here. And then I have next to me my flour, my egg, my salt, uh, my little nutmeg piece that I'm gonna grate in there. Um, and I'm gonna basically make my dough right here. Once the dough's formed, remove this cutting board and I'm gonna start rolling them out and flick them out. Now the key is, what fancy gnocchi board I'm gonna use today? So I have two, I have this one, which can be used for ravioli or gnocchi. And then I have, this is like this pretty one with all different ones on it. So I think today we'll use the non, we'll use the taller, uh, which one? Let's use the, the bigger one today. So we're gonna use this one, okay? So I'm not sure which side, I'm probably gonna use the top. Super straightforward, here we go. So I'm gonna take my potatoes, split them open. So what I'm looking to do is get everything out of the center. So I'm gonna split them open, let the steam out, look at that. Woo, these are hot. Now behind me, to get those all open and steam releasing, behind me on the stove, I'm gonna have a pot of boiling water. The water needs to be salted. And then what I have is a little strainer to make sure I can pull my gnocchis out, okay? Got it. The key is, is having everything ready to go. So um, we're gonna pull the potatoes out, I'm gonna rice them, and then I'm gonna start making our dough. So make sure everything's clean. So here's key, food mill, AKA the ricer. Which one of these do I want? So I'm gonna go with the medium one. By the way, my wife is dancing naked on the other <laughs> side of the camera right now in the kitchen. She's I'm really not, not but. naked, but was dancing. So I'm gonna take a fork and I'm gonna start pulling out the potato meat. Okay, it's key. Now, we are in a time of thrift. Don't throw away the potato skins. Do baked potato skins. So, part of the reason why I'm choosing to do some really fun, simple stuff like this is I keep seeing all these cranky posts from people bitching that chefs at home are working with stuff that nobody has. So, I call bullshit. Um, a lot of us have stuff that people don't have because people want us to test out stuff. And a lot of times we won't bring it into our restaurant yet until we get to play with it at home. So there's your answer. It may seem odd or difficult to find, but most of it's very easy to find. You just gotta ask around. And there's this cool new piece of technology in the world. It's called Google, AKA Google, if you wanna say it correctly, that uh, will tell you what it is and where to buy it. So. I'm also baking a tart to in the oven at the same time, for those of you who saw my live stream. So, these potatoes, I'm gonna give you guys a little heads up. They come out of the oven, they're really hot. So, by using a fork, it's really good because it breaks up the potato instead of scooping it out with a spoon. So it's doing, it's, it's aerating it, it's cooling it down, okay, while I'm getting it into the, the food mill, AKA the ricer. 
Oh boy, she just turned on the lights. Ruin the shot, it's over, continuity's done. Now she's going back to dancing naked on the other side of the camera. So it's really important, make sure your potatoes are done. Uh, part of the reason why I like to bake them is because I'm removing excess moisture. If you boil them, you're adding moisture to the potato, and I don't think you're gonna get as nice of a product. They'll be a little too, you'll require a lot more work on your part. But these potatoes are nice and fluffy, and they're gonna be great as potato skins tomorrow. Everything I do right now, I try to look for multi-day use, or smarts of being ahead. Also making apple butter so I gotta check on that. Okay, cooking those down, those are good. All right. Okay, so the key now is to make sure I can get all the spuds out. So I'm spreading the potatoes out because I want to give my get them to cool. So I'm spreading them out over the cutting board to even out the temperature. I want to take the temp down a little bit. Because if you drop in your egg, you know, while it's hot, I'm going to have a scrambled egg and I don't want a scrambled egg. And so I go forward pushes it through, then reverse it, then do it again. Okay, beautiful. So, what I'm going to do, spread out my potato. You can see, so, if you have a wooden kitchen counter, if you put it on here when it's hot, it's going to mess it up. So, I, I wanted to get it on here while it's on this board while it's cool. And now, I'm going to start adding some ingredients to this. So, I'm going to add salt. I'm going to add nutmeg and then I'm gonna lightly dust with flour in different areas, then start incorporating, then do the egg. So, really key, you wanna disperse everything evenly. Nutmeg on the microplane, not too much, but I want enough. That's it. Some people may say it's too much. I like a little nutmeg in mine, but that's, that's my choice, not theirs. Salt. Okay. Now, I gave you the recipe, and I'll put it up again at the finish. Okay. It says one, uh, one teaspoon of nutmeg. That's not the case. It's one pinch, like a little bit. So, if you put a teaspoon of nutmeg in here, you would not like me. Okay, so, so far. Now, this is about three pounds of potatoes, maybe a little bit more. So it requires some flour here. So I'm gonna even spread out the flour. Disbursement, key is disbursement. Okay, so. Now I'm gonna start folding it into itself. That's what this is for. Okay. 
okay? And then pushing it back out. Okay, temperature's down. Now I can really start working. So, temperature dropped really quickly by spreading it out. So the key here is to make sure that the dough doesn't get overworked, but I can slowly fold in my flour. Oh yeah, this is starting to look great. But now, keep working the dough. Yes, this is a dough. There we go, now it's working the way I want it. Feeling, it's coming together gently. You don't wanna overwork it because if you do, then you get not pillowy. I want pillowy, beautiful. Okay. Okay, add a little bit more flour here. Yep, cause it's still a little sticky. Okay, so you can see my hands. It's okay, they're washed. Once I add this, then I'm gonna add my egg right in the middle. This will make a mess as you can see. But the mess starts to come together, starts to create a great traditional thing that everybody loves. Everybody loves a gnocchi. So there's a ton of different types of gnocchi, but this type I like because it's a little bit easier. There's also a Parisian gnocchi, which is made with pâte choux. I'm not a big, I, I like those, they're great. But this one is classic. I'll look at here a little bit more. I'm gonna need a little bit more flour, I can tell, because it's a little too wet still. I'm gonna use my scraper. A little more flour. There we go. Yep, this is gonna be it right here. I can already feel the difference. Okay, and it's almost cool enough for me to take it off the board, which is what I really want to do, because it'll give me the ability to really work it a little bit more, get all the bits and pieces in here. There we go. And then I'll start rolling it in pieces, and we'll start to create that gnocchi shape, little dumplings. Still nice and warm, it's not overworked. There we go. Yep, that's better. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so I wanna get all this. This is all really good stuff here. That is potato, which I need. I need all the potato. See? There we go. Look at that, that is where we need to be. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands, put in all this flour, and we are good. I'm gonna start rolling yuki, wow. Nice batter here. All of this, little bits that fall off that board, are gonna get reincorporated back into this dough. And same with everything off my hands, because it's eventually all that flour and all that dough, it's gonna get absorbed. So I'm gonna start pulling it in, fold it over, roll it in. One done.
Yep. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna let this dough rest for one minute. I'm gonna go wash my hands and start rolling out a ton of these. We got two nice pieces here. Okay, so key is, is to have your water boiling and then the empty dough ready. Okay, so key also dry hands. So I gotta make sure my hands are dry and clean so that when I start rolling them out, they don't stick. Water's boiling, good to go. So make sure everything is dry. Okay, I'm gonna work onto this tray. So, cut the dough in sections. key is just rolling up all these little pieces to make the gnocchi balls. So by rolling them out, you're making your logs. And if they get too thin on one end, you can always crump them back together. It's kind of like Play-Doh. It's just not a really bad color. You have a lot more control over this dough than you think, but don't let it get so cold that you can't roll it. Then it becomes the nightmare. This was like the best job. So. So the key, I'm rolling out and I'm spreading out my fingers to keep it consistent. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this is gonna be the last one I do for a minute because then I'm gonna start forming and we'll start boiling some. Okay. Okay. So, all I'm gonna do is start cutting. So I use my dough, my little one. Okay, now for my shaping, I take this little ball, and I'm gonna put it on my gnocchi board. Using my thumb, I'm gonna print it and put an indent on it on the back side so it helps it cook. Now, if you don't have a gnocchi board like this one, there's a million things you can use. Some people just use a fork. You can do this. Take the back of the fork, same thing with the gnocchi. Pull it away and you get the same little ridge that you would get on a lot of others. So I'm testing out my gnocchi board. So super excited about it. Can be used for pasta, it can be used for gnocchi. Now I'm gonna get these going in the water. So what I'm looking for now, I'm gonna drop these into my boiling water. That's salted. And they'll float when they're ready. So my key now is to set it up so when I pull those, I can drop in the next.
So this one had a point on the end. I didn't like it, so I push it together. And then I just start cutting gnocchi. My gnocchis aren't floating. I'll bring it over and show you. So I'm just gonna keep one, two. Like I said, if you don't have a gnocchi board, you can use anything else. You can use the back of a fork. Uh, I've seen people use a box grater. Uh, I've seen people use a ton of different things. I'll pull out a box grater and show you a box grater trick in a second. Okay. My gnocchis are now floating. That means they're finished, so I'm gonna pull them out, and what I have over here is a Silpat tray that I'm gonna put them on with a little olive oil. I don't wanna shock mine in ice water. Some people like to, I don't. I feel they absorb ice water. Um, if you if you feel that you must shock it in ice water, make sure you salt your ice water. So I'm gonna put this here. Look, I'll show you. There's the tubes that I've created, and then here are the other gnocchi. So let's do this. Do 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 do. Okay. Okay, gnocchis are floating. Lay them out on my silk pad. Now I'm gonna drop the next ones. And I'm gonna keep going. So now you have an idea, gnocchi, super simple. I'll show you that recipe again, okay? Do, 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 do. Now, it says one, teaspoon of nutmeg. That's not the case. It's one pinch because I was writing quickly. So there is your basics for your uh, gnocchi dough. Okay. So next video will be what to do with your gnocchi.